Hey guys, Proper English here. In my comparator video the other day, I showed you an XOR gate using the new Redstone comparator. And I told you that I wanted to make that too wide. And so that's exactly what I've done. And it's what we're going to take a look at today. So let's start off with a quick demonstration. We can turn one of these inputs on over here. And we see that that bit turns on because we've got one of the inputs, but not both on. If I turn the other one on, now, the output's off, and if we flip this guy so we can see that just the other one's on, the output is on again. And that's an XOR gate. And these guys function independently of each other, two wide tileable. It's pretty cool. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So let's take a look at the logic for how this XOR gate works once again. And we'll also take a look at some of the design considerations that had to go into building this two wide XOR gate. All right, so what I've got here is the XOR gate that I showed you in my comparator video the other day. If I turn this input on, the comparator over here turns on because we've got an A input, but we don't have a stronger B input. We're also sending a signal over here through this repeater so we get a strong B input to this comparator. Now, if I turn this guy off, turn this input on, we get this comparator turning on because we've got an A input, but we don't have a stronger B input. We're also sending a signal over here through this repeater and powering the B input for this comparator. Now, if I have both inputs on, what happens is we're powering both B inputs with a strong signal, and so the output is going to be off. And what this is doing is it's using a logic gate called B does not imply A. All right, so I've got one set up with torches over here so we can see how this works. This is a logic gate in which the output will only be on if our A input, which is this one over here, is on, and the B input is off. So when they're both off, the output's off. If just B is on, now the output is off. If just A is on, this is the one situation where the output is on. And when they're both on, of course, the output is off. Now, that's exactly what we're doing with this comparator over here. The thing to remember is the B input has to be stronger than the A input for this to work. And so we can take a look at that. Right now, we've got B off and A off, the output's off. If we turn B on, keep A off, the output's off. If I turn A on and only A on, the output's on. But now, if B is turned on and A is turned on, the output's off. And so that's the logic behind this XOR gate and this one over here. But it gets a little trickier when you want to stack this up in a two wide tileable fashion. So let's take a look at some of the complications we've run into with the comparator block. Building two wide circuits with the comparator block can be a little bit tricky because we've got three inputs. We've got two B inputs and we've got an A input. And so when we set up a circuit where we've got two of these next to each other, what's going to happen is the B input in the middle is going to affect both comparator blocks. So if I flip this guy, it affects both of them. We don't want that. We can counteract this by staggering. So right now we've got one down here, we've got one up here, one down here, and I can show you how I've used this over here in the two wide XOR gate. And so you can see that this is staggered down then we go up, and then we go down, and then we go up. And I'm going to provide a world download so you can dissect this circuit and take a look at exactly what I've done. It would be a little tedious to go through it in a video. But one thing to consider is that you'll need to be in snapshot 13 week 1B, okay? Because in week 1A, this did not work, okay? So if we set up a torch there, some wire there, and a comparator over here. This works fine in B, but not in A. So make sure you're in the latest snapshot. And yeah, now this circuit may or may not end up being useful because in B, we've lost the instant feature of the redstone comparator. So you can see over here that it's no longer instant. This is it's strange. I'm getting all different timings over here for the uh, comparator block. We can actually, let's come over here. We'll 
set this one up so that we've got comparator and redstone and flip the lever. You can see it's definitely not instant over here. It's it's strange. It's still faster than one tick. You can see over there. But uh, but yeah, it's changed and who knows, it may change again. So we'll see. This may or may not be useful, but either way, it's a good idea to take a look at this because you can get an idea of how to stagger comparators and that is going to be useful no matter what. So, thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.